Hi, Himan. Good morning, Shanti. Could you please share the screen? Uh, you, yeah. Right. Yes. So thank you for joining. So today basically I'll do a walkthrough or demo on uh, how we can create uh, Azure virtual machines via Azure portal. Hmm. OK. So uh, as per the agenda, we have uh, three. We have divided this demo into three parts. First part, we'll look at how we can create uh, the virtual machine. And we'll see after creating how we can connect to this virtual machine. And at the end, uh, we're going to delete the virtual machine. Um, so. First, uh, we, we can to just to give a little. Um, intro about virtual machine. It's basically. Um, on the physical. Uh, disk, we are actually partitioning that physical disk with uh, virtual machine so that we can optimize the resources and we can use the resources of virtual machine as per our need instead of uh, paying for the machine even though when we are not using it. So this helps us to be more cost efficient and uh, we can customize the needs of a virtual machine as per the business requirement as the need arises. So here I will be walking over through some of the screenshots that were captured as part of this demo. Once the demo is done, then we can um, try to uh, replicate the same steps on the portal and see how uh, this is doable. So here we first log into the portal, which are account on the right. You can see that's my name. <clears throat> and um, in the search bar, you uh, basically search for virtual machines, just like in the earlier video uh, we tried to do about uh, resource manager. Similarly, you search for the virtual machine and it will um, show you the results. And um, at the bottom, you have options to select from how you want to create virtual machine. So here we will choose the, the basic version, uh, the very first, which says Azure virtual machine. We'll later discuss about the different options that we have here. And once we select that uh, first option, uh, we are required to provide some inputs uh, as per the credentials that are required here. Uh, first being the portal uh, Azure subscription ID, which is by default. We have only one in this case, and uh, I have created a new resource group for this virtual machine. So you can see the naming convention. I gave a name Azure VM followed by VM and uh, as a suffix and RG as a resource group. And um, I will be creating uh, this virtual machine in uh, uh, OS. You have an option to select the OS wherever you see, which it says image. It's referring to the OS. So I have selected uh, for this demo Windows Server 2019. Um, and availability option, I've chosen no infrastructure for now. So we can also discuss this later. So I'm going forward. Um, so once the virtual machine is ready, there is some um, authorization that is required because you don't want um, every person or a guest person to connect to your resources. So there's a need for a user and password for the security and authentication. So here I've given my name and password um, for this. And we have different options to connect to the virtual machine through either um, HTTP port, SSH, and RDP. So here we are using RDP as per the server's need. So once we provided those input, I've clicked on review and create at the very bottom. You can see that button highlighted. And uh, you can also see the size. So this is something you can customize. Um, based on the requirement, the amount of traffic that you might expect, the number of resources that you will need, how important it is to have the response very efficient 
considering all those factors, uh, you can select the size. So you might see um, that the price range varies from like 0.18 um, cent per hour to almost 20, 25 dollars per per hour. So per month you're looking at uh, between $100 per month to almost $13,000, $15,000 per month. So there is um, uh, they quite a good option of scalability as the requirement changes, uh, the demands of the business changes. You can always scale your VMs, um, and this is the fast, fastest way you can access your virtual machines. So once you provide all these details, you know you go ahead, review, and uh, create the VM. So here you're basically validating um, the portal is basically validating before creating the virtual machine and you can see how much you will be paying for this virtual machine as per uh, the need. Um, so I have selected pay as you go, which means you pay only when you're using, you're making some transactions, you're uh, using the resources of virtual machine, you're basically paying for that only. Um, and we will be um, part of this demo. We will be creating virtual machine and also um, deleting right after that. So um, we won't be really incurring any big uh, price for this as such. So after after providing those details, and then validation is passed. You select create. Um, here basically you can see the summary of what all options you have selected. Um, it's a good way to basically um, recheck the options before creating so that um, there's a very little option of uh, any human errors. As you can see at the bottom, the port is RDP, which is 3398. So I go ahead and create. So now the process of creating virtual machine is in process. You can see the deployment is in progress on the top. And after some time, you will see the status changes to complete. You can see the deployment is now complete. That means your VM is ready. But to access the VM, uh, you need some connection set up. That's something that we'll go over now. And along with uh, creating virtual machine. There are few other resources that will be created as part of this uh, VM creation, which are uh, network security group, network interface. Uh, there'll be a unique public ID, uh, sorry, ID, unique public IP address that will be assigned to this VM to connect remotely. And um, the virtual uh, machine itself. So before you go ahead, you can see all these um, other resources all automatically created. And um, once you connect to the VM, you will when you come back, you, you can see one additional resource as a disk that will also be visible. Uh, at this moment, you won't be able to see, but when you come back during the demo, you will you will notice that. So I'm going ahead. So here, um, once you click on the virtual machine, you have an option on the very top to connect. So you go ahead and click on that uh, connect button. So here, um, as we selected the port as RDP, the portal is providing you with already some pre-filled details in the RDP file, like IP address, the type of connection, uh, which will help you connect to the VM. So I'm going to download the RDP file on my local um, PC and then uh, connect to the virtual machine. Here you can see the prompt shows up that we are remotely connecting to the VM and you will be um, asked to basically authenticate yourself with your user ID and password. Once you provide those details, um, you go ahead and you can see your connection to the virtual machine has been established. And this is a screenshot from the virtual machine. On the very top left, you can see 
um, the IP address that was assigned to this um, uh, virtual machine. You can also see the size that was selected uh, D2 V3 VM. And um, as as this is a Windows, it comes along with the server manager, which basically allows you to um, look at the resources that are part of this uh, server. Uh, what is your configuration? If you go on to the local server option on the very left, you should be able to see some details. OK, so here now we are at step uh, three where we will be deleting the Azure virtual machine before. Um, before doing that, we want to actually stop the virtual machine. So currently it's running. Um, once you basically stop, you can see uh, the status uh, will be changed to stop. You can see at the um, bottom where the Windows VM is there. Under the status, you can see the virtual machine is now stopped. That means it is ready to uh, delete. So there are two ways you can follow. One, um, because this virtual machine is already part of a resource group, if you directly delete the resource group, it would automatically delete the virtual machine as well. That way you don't have to delete the virtual machine, then delete the resource group. So which just adds an additional step for you. So again, I, I went back to this uh, Azure portal, search for this uh, um, resource group, Azure VM, and uh, entered the name at the very bottom. You can see the delete button got highlighted, and that means I gave the right name. And um, here, um, if you look closer, the very last resource here shows as the disk. This is something that we didn't see when the VM was created but now it's visible. So that means we have almost six resources um, as part of this uh, VM creation. So as we click on uh, delete, you can see slowly one after another, all the resources have been deleted. And on the top right, you can see the notification as um, the resource Azure VM is now, resource group is deleted. So that ends uh, um, the slides. So now we'll jump on to the portal itself to basically um, um, practice or demo the same from uh, the portal. So let's search for virtual machine. So I'm going to select the very first with the screen. It's saying um, there's no virtual machines to display, so let's go ahead and create one. And as I said, you will see the three drop downs. We'll select the very first one, Azure Virtual Machine. OK, we'll try to fill some of the details here. Um, you can see the subscription is already pre-populated. I'm going to create a new resource group. Um, if you can remember, um virtual machine hyphen vm hyphen rg is the resource group name and you can see the check mark on the right that means it is valid if you try to put some any special characters you know it will highlight saying that this is not proper and uh, special characters are not allowed so I'll give you a name, VM1 hyphen uh, VM. Region, um, I'm just keeping US East, which is the closest. Availability options, let's go there and we'll select no infrastructure redundancy required at this time. Uh, security type, we can keep it standard, the basic level. And from the image, <clears throat> I'm selecting the same uh, Windows Server 2019. So this is you can you can say this is um, just to give a background um, on the physical server, whatever the OS is already existing, it's called the host operating system. And top of that um, host operating system, we have a hypervisor which basically helps us to 
have multiple virtual machines virtualize that physical environment so that each virtual machine can work as an independent um, physical uh, uh, machine server. So here, um, so this operating system, whatever we are selecting here as part of image is referred to the guest operating system. So I have selected Windows Server. Um, um, the remaining options regarding architecture or the processor that that remains same. I'm not changing anything. It says the already pre-populated size is not available, so I'm going to go try to find the one we recently selected standard DC one V3 with one CPU and eight GB of RAM. OK, um, it's asking to provide a username. I'm going to provide a name that is valid human that mean. And uh, I'll give a name. OK, so because this is a Windows um, guest OS, I'll, I'm using port RDP 3389 as, as of now. So I'll go ahead, review and create. I'll give a couple of uh, uh, seconds. You can see the validation is passed. Um, and also it is showing how much we will be paying for for this uh, usage of this VM per hour. Um, I'll go down. Uh, you can basically look at the summary of what all options you have selected. So I'm good with what, what I have here. I'll go ahead and click on create. Now you can see the different stages of deployment. Uh, starting from uh, in progress to complete. So you want to before go ahead and try to connect. You want to make sure the deployment is in complete stage. Um, you can see in the out of five, we can see three of those resources. Network security group, uh, IP address and um, uh, virtual network are already created. We already got an alert saying that uh, the deployment is complete. OK, so now let's um, go to resource. Now we have VM ready, so we have to try connecting to the VM. So here you can also see the IP address which which will connect. So um, I'll do connect. So you can see the stop is um, enabled now. That means it's it's the VM is already connected, not so not connected, but it's already up and running. So we don't have to manually start it. It's already started. It's up and connected, ready to connect. So we're going to connect as regular connect. Um, you can see the IP address 52.226.17.200. So now you're going to connect through the RDP file. I'm going to save. Um, the downloads. There's already VM1 RDP. I'm going to open this file and double click. There's a prompt showing um, you want to go ahead. It says now you can see it's a VPN connect. Now it's asking for a password that I set up. Make sure you have it uh, saved or you have it remembered. Otherwise, you won't be able to connect to the VM. Now a remote session has opened. You can see the Windows uh, is booting and the desktop is being loaded.
on the top you can see the IP address of the virtual machine to verify uh, you're connected to the right VM that you wanted to connect. And you will see slowly the server manager would also be um, uh, opened uh, without manually opening where you can actually see the summary of uh, this uh, the resource the local server the details the os all those uh, summary details you can also verify here once you connect to make sure that uh, you have all the required configuration set up and complete so i'll go to the local server uh, you can see the name of the computer is vm1 hyphen vm that's what i gave and um, you can see the disk, disk space that was allocated for this is 12 gb uh, 12 gb is the sorry ram 126 gb is the storage allocation that was done um, i think this details should be um, good enough to understand um, the setup so i'm going to minimize this and now that the vm is up and running you have an option to basically use this as a separate uh, uh, machine itself so you can connect to the um, browser you can have your own apps running you can tomorrow download uh, your own app and uh, host it uh, here so that it can be uh, used uh, so for now i'm going to minimize this we'll go back to our uh, azure portal and try um, to connect back to our virtual machine so i'm going to the home page um, i'll search for virtual machines VM1 VM, so you can see it's running. Uh, sorry, I, I missed it. I wanted to show that. So you can see the status now shows as running. Right, so once we stop, you will see uh, this allocating process started like that. So you can see, and uh, on the bottom, you can also know, verify that the remote connection has been minimized and you will see that will be closed automatically. So I'm not deleting directly. It's not the best practice. Uh, it, it won't uh, uh, be the best practice to delete without stopping the virtual machine. So I'm going ahead. I'm going to stop the resource before deleting the resource group. You are getting a prompt um, saying that it will take a couple of minutes. You say yes. You can see on the top saying stopping virtual machine. At the bottom you can see that um, remote connection is also now closed. OK, so while that is happening, uh, let's see, successfully stop. OK, now um, I can delete this VM yeah. and I can go to the resource group and also delete. Both are same, but um, I don't have to repeat the steps. So I'm going to go back and search for the resource group I created. So I'll go on a resource group. I should see something um, virtual machine. So this is the one we created earlier. I'll go inside and I'm going to delete this resource group. Now you can see uh, when we first created the virtual machine, we didn't notice or we didn't see the disk highlighting. Now you can see uh, once we accessed or we connected to the virtual machine via RDP port, we are able to see this virtual machine. So we'll go ahead and delete the resource. This would delete all the six resources that were allocated as part of creating this virtual machine. So I'm going ahead. I'm going to delete this resource. Um, it's asking for the name. So name can be um, case uh, insensitive. So it doesn't have to be the same uh, name. Naming convention should be same, but 
um, the caps or smalls can be combined and you will still be able to uh, delete the virtual machine or resource group. So I'm going ahead. I'm going to delete. Uh, yes. You can see slowly I know you had six resources. Slowly one after other, each resource will be deallocated. Um, Let's see what is happening on the notification. Deleting resources. OK, it's running. Um, it's taking some time. You can see actually creation was uh, faster than deletion. Uh, that's the best part of uh, virtual machines. Uh, imagine we have to set up a physical server. Um, some it would if you're not fully aware it can it can take uh, from few hours to almost a day we have to select uh, the um, uh, physical server we have to physically connect the ports um, set up the uh, routing configuration make sure we are able to connect to the server set up some security uh, related so all those things have now currently been taken care uh, by azure so this is the beauty of having um, virtual machines. You can see for out of six resources, two have already been uh, deleted. Uh, we have still four left. The disk was got deleted and um, virtual machine, they both got deleted. And now slowly other items will be deallocated. OK, we have three more left. IP address, network security and virtual network. So basically if we now we only paid um, for um, we selected pay as you go. That means uh, the, the time we spent on uh, the virtual machine, um, the amount of transactions we have done will be charged only for those. Um, we have other options uh, based on our uh, business requirement. If we know that um, we will be using the virtual machine for a longer time, say for a couple of years or three years, we have another option where um, um, that allows us to pay our uh, uh, dedicate virtual machine for ourselves. And um, that will also give us a good discount on the price as well. OK, you can see no resources match your filter. That means the resource has been deleted, even though the notification on the top right still shows it is running. So let's go to the home page. We'll try again under resource group if it's still seeing the virtual machine. So this is deleting. This is still in process. So even though if you enter, you will see that none of the resources are available, but there's uh, some process that is running. Uh, let's see if Jason would give us some details about uh, this deletion process. Um, I don't see any details here. Uh, now on the notification, you can see the deleted the resource group. So now if you um, go back to resource group. You won't see that uh, virtual machine resource group. So here ends um, the demo for this creating virtual machine on Azure portal. Thank you. Okay, good, good, good. Let us stop the recording.